watching my first surfboard about 65. <clears throat> but I was a, just a little grommet at the shop, and there were other people that were, uh, you know, doing most of the shaping and, and stuff. But I got in there and messed around a little bit. Well, my father actually uh, started the uh, surfboard factory. And uh, the people working in the surfboard factory were surfers, and they were cool. And uh, you know, I was working in my dad's hardware store, and so it was a lot more interesting to go and hang out with the cool surfers than it was, was to uh, sit in the surf the hardware store and sell hardware. <laughs> so that's kind of where uh, I got interested in the surfing. Plus, a uh, surfboard building is a very creative endeavor. My family has a very strong strain of uh, creativity that runs through it. My mother was a fantastic artist. And so, uh, you know, if you're looking for creativity and, you know, artistic expression, uh, surfboard building was a natural outlet as compared to selling nuts and bolts in a hardware store. So, originally, uh, the surf shop was originally open. It was Hudson's, Hudson's Surfboards. And then there were several different uh, labels that went through the shop. Uh, Unit 4 was a label. There were several labels that uh, other uh, surfers that worked there, the billboards uh, before me named it. But, uh, I named mine Islander, and all of my boards were all Islander surfboards. I believe the mid-80s, uh, I don't even remember the date that I stopped building surfboards, but um, when we were building surfboards, all along we, were, we did all sorts of different side jobs and projects because of the fiberglass and uh, the high level of quality that a surfboard requires uh, made something like fixing a boat um, very easy because the level of quality in a boat repair was not as high a quality as necessary to build a surfboard. So, <clears throat> In fact, one of my first jobs ever when I worked there was uh, doing a boat repair in the, in the early 60s, about 64, 65. So we had, a, we had parallel business running uh, for a long time of doing other projects other than uh, surfboards. And um, the thing that came to dominate was uh, boat repair because it just paid so much better. And uh, you know, we're working for people who had uh, a, lot, a lot of disposable income, uh, wealthy people, people who had boats, not 17 year olds, but you know, very mm -hmm. little income. So, it became a financial decision, and I resisted it for a long time because my heart was in the surfing and the creativity of the surfing. But uh, I finally gave—I finally just admitted that I could make more money doing something else. And that was the made, that was the decision that uh, made me close the surfboard factory. Ricky Bullock probably shaped the most boards at uh, at our place. And he's still around. Steve Forrestal, who I think is a fantastic craftsman. Those are two very strong names. Uh, there have been quite a few people that have come through the uh, surf shop. In fact, I run into people all the time. I was at Home Depot ordering some wood today, and the guy selling me the wood bought a surfboard from me <laughs> a long time <laughs> in the 60s, you know. He, he, he knew the names of some of the old boards and things, so it was, it was quite interesting. We, you know, went back through time together there while I was buying my wood for my dad. Well, uh, you know, surfing is 100% subjective, so if everyone thinks that a certain design does a certain thing and everyone agrees that that's what you want to do with the surfboard, then of course that's going to be the most effective design. It's very, very subjective in that, you know, because it's totally a feeling. So if you're trying to perform a certain, uh, a certain uh, activity on the surfboard, like if you were nose riding or you know, uh, doing loop-de-loops or cutbacks or if you're focusing on a particular uh, maneuver, then you can uh, design the board to perform that maneuver. And I think that uh, what has happened is different maneuvers will become popular or high scoring in the surf contest, or uh, very the pro surfers would popularize certain maneuvers, and that would influence the design of the board to mm -hmm. uh, accomplish that particular maneuver. And so uh, a lot of people would follow trickle-down effect from the top of the food chain. We bought a container load of used surfboards from California in the 60s, probably 65, and all these surfboards, there were, 
uh, factory rejects. Uh, they might have been from pawn shops, who knows, but some of them had holes in them. <laughs> it was very interesting, and uh, it was like having Christmas, so we got this big batch of surfboards in. You know, people pull them out, well, look at this one, and they were all different brands, all different, uh, you know, um, it'd be like getting Paris Hilton's wardrobe, you know, if you're a woman, like, well, look at these, all these different clothes and things, so it was, it was very interesting uh, to see the different designs uh, that, and the color and, you know, doc, or, ornamentation was very important. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I was influenced very heavily by Skip Fry, and uh, he's, uh, you know, San Diego uh, shaper. Very nice guy, built great. In fact, he's the one that conceived of the egg surfboard concept, which is uh, a very, very good design. And uh, they've stood the test of time. So Skip Fry was, uh, you know, we were Gordon Smith dealer, so we saw some of his boards come through. And um, you know, I went to California in '67 uh, and went to the Gordon Smith factory saw Skip and saw, saw his designs, went to Southern California and saw the, the boards that he, were make, he was making and, you know, they're probably very similar today. Not trendy, you know, he's got a certain idea, stays with it and, uh, you know, he would make a, you know, he would make a, 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 a board that would be, uh, have some characteristics of a, of a trend design, but it would still have a very strong flavor of his concept of what an egg should be like. So. You know, I've gotten very conservative in my old age, and um, one of the things about being conservative is that, uh, you know, if someone can make something better somewhere else cheaper, then kudos to them. And so, that that um, that production of boards overseas um, is going to stimulate the local shapers because they're going to have to adapt to the construction methods. I do believe that local shapers are still going to give very good value because uh, localized designs are going to